it plays a very central part. Uh, the Hague Court of Conduct is the only instrument uh, that really formulates a political commitment by the subscribing states against uh, ballistic missile proliferation, and in that it is a very central instrument in the missile non-proliferation architecture that we have. It is also the only instrument that actually seeks universalization and is open to all states, and therefore, while there's other instruments which are much more confined in terms of their membership, this instrument has a much more legitimacy because it seeks the, the universalization. Beyond the political commitment uh, that comes with it also on substance, the uh, transparency and the confidence building measures that, put, uh, that it puts into place, they are very important to reduce risks, uh, risk of miscalculation, but also escalation risks, and therefore it is quite central to what we do to reduce risks that come from ballistic missiles. The Hague Code of Conduct is quite complementary to other instruments that we already have in the area of ballistic missile proliferation, or non-proliferation, rather. The MTCR, for example, the Missile Technology Control Regime, and the Vasna arrangement already put in place controls that limit um, proliferation of missiles on the supply side, and the Hague Code of Conduct is complementary because it addresses the demand side. The transparency and confidence building measures reduce risks and threat perspectives, and therefore the demand for missiles. More specifically, these instruments are also to some extent mutually reinforcing, uh, because for the implementation of export control, having additional information on the national uh, missile programs and space programs is actually really important, and it helps states to have that information when they make their licensing decisions, for example. At the same time, it helped create and strengthen the norm of missile non-proliferation, which also then helps the implementation of measures under the MTCR. It helps more states actually adopt supply side measures as well as demand side measures. So there is an interplay that actually is mutually reinforcing and, and therefore complementary. There is a couple of gaps in terms of the coverage between the different instruments, but it is quite complementary uh, to most of the, the other instruments that we currently have.